On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are going to do a real repair on my cheap 2006 Porsche Boxster for only $3. And I bet you guys don't believe me, but keep watching and I'm going to show you how. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo and like I said, I'm here with my 2006 Porsche Boxster 987 that I bought for only $9,000. And I bought it cheap because it's probably the highest mileage one out there. Uh, there's some others I've seen close in the 180s, but this one has 194,000 currently. And this weekend, we're going on a road trip with Hoovy and the gang. And of course, we're gonna add a bunch of miles to it and go tear it up in the canyons and the hills and just have a good time. So to make that happen, I put a new head unit in it. The car has a new Atoto wireless CarPlay head unit in it, and it rocks. I took it for a drive the other day. First, wireless CarPlay and Android Auto are just nice, so you don't have to plug your phone in when you get in your car, it just pops up immediately. And that backup camera rocks. It is HD, so crispy, and yes, you can definitely just hit the button and turn it on while you're going down the road. So that has been a huge improvement. But there were a bunch of comments. People complaining about one problem that the previous Gen Boxer and the 987 share. So uh, this is a very common problem, especially once they get some mileage on them. If you use your car, uh, you'll probably have this issue too. And many of you can see it already because you're probably Porsche guys. So you're just looking at it and you're like, I know what's wrong with this car. So today we're gonna fix it and it is legit. Only going to cost $3. Let's jump right in. So here is the problem. This thing has these ring rails. First, I do need to paint this. It's on my to-do list, uh, but I'll need to get some paper, you know, lay down a tape line, put some paper over that, and then tape it again, and then uh, take some trim paint, and that'll look brand new again. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna mess with it at all because obviously it's something that will not corrode. Uh, it's like aluminum or some cast piece there. So it's not a big deal. That's just cosmetic. That's not what we're working on fixing today. That's a zero dollar fix because I keep this paint in stock all the time. This is what we need to fix today. So if you look here, it seemed weird to me when I first got the car and it turns out it is weird. Uh, this is like a rain rail, of course. All the water comes down through here, dumps down here and uh, gets you know piped out of the car with some drain tubes. But uh, this should not come over it. This right here is a super reinforced I assume it's cable wrapped in rubber and stitched into the top and it gives the top a lot of its tension and that's supposed to fall inside this channel. So if we open the top up, we can actually just push it over into it. You can see that it goes like all the way up to there. So we're sticking way over that thing. Um, and like I said, it's supposed to sit inside it like it does down there. And then you can see where eventually the top starts to wear out because it's being used and this one is honestly old, you know, it's got some miles on it and it stops pulling this back into place. So Porsche guys don't like that. They're complaining, and one of the buyers was also complaining. There is a list of people that want this car, and don't worry, uh, like next week, I'll email you guys in order. So that's how that's gonna go when it's time to actually sell this car, and there's a lot of you. So if you don't get an email, sorry, uh, the car will already be gone. Uh, I'm really not making any money on it. There's already, what, the money to put the head unit in it, fluids, fixing this top. Selling this car will be a wash for me, but somebody's gonna get a good deal. So today, since some people were complaining and asking about this, we're gonna fix it. Over here on the passenger side, you can see it has the same issue. It's sticking out over here too. So, first things first, you gotta open your top up. You wanna open it about halfway, get it right up here, and that will let us get in here so we can access the back of the top and start fixing the problem. Got some uh, cottonwood tree. All right, let's get this top open. Obviously the easiest part of the process, hit the switch. I think that's about as far as we want to open it. Also guys, I lied. It wasn't $3. It was only $2.17 for the parts to fix this. Now that we have the top open, we're gonna pop loose these two Velcro strips. There's one right here that I'm touching and one more right there. So I realize it's a bit dark, but you're just gonna open those two up and that should let you access uh, the back of the top here because we gotta get behind the little beauty cover on that. You can see where this rubber's been rubbing on the outside of the ring rail there. 
or the support for the top. And if you manually jump out while you're closing it, you can actually just push this in by hand. It won't solve the problem, but it will get you through, you know, a couple times before you actually repair this thing. So threw a little bit of light in here for you guys. Now you can see what we actually need to work on here. This little triangle flap that's connected to this elastic, this elastic is worthless now. At first, it shouldn't be slack. It should have tension on it, uh, but it's like a piece of one inch elastic. And what that does is when you pull on the triangle, it pulls the top in like that. So you do need to get actually quite a bit of tension on there, more than you would expect. And once you get that tight, when the top closes, it should pull everything into place where it belongs. So what we're gonna do to fix it is take a one inch strip of elastic from Walmart, uh, if you need a part number, 11307B. I went to the craft department, picked this up. It was literally $2.17. And it should be exactly what we need to hold this tension together. And it should match the factory spec because they also used one inch elastic. There we go, ready to go. Just had these OEM Porsche parts shipped in from Germany. I mean, sorry, Walmart down the street and uh, I'm gonna run inside and grab a stapler. There's two ways to do this. You could stitch it in. Obviously, I don't sew. I understand, you know, the idea of stitching, but to properly stitch this, I would say you need like multiple passes. So you'd have to stitch for quite a while with your hands deep inside this pocket, and you might poke through the top. It's honestly too risky to do that just with a needle and thread. So we're gonna use a stapler, and we're gonna put uh, three to four staples on each end of this, and basically just pull it tight anchor it where the old elastic was and we should be home free. I can't exactly staple and shoot at the same time, but you guys can see I've got three staples right in there, stitching that together. That leaves my elastic hanging off the back right there. And now I'll stretch it out and staple it back to the back where that stud is that uh, holds everything together. This has taken like 30 seconds so far. I thought it was gonna be harder than this, but honestly, pretty easy as long as it works. If it doesn't work, I'll be in there with a staple puller or like a tiny screwdriver removing every single one of these. I do think the staples are gonna be better than stitches. I know you would have a ton of stitches if you did it right, but there's really no access. So if you're gonna get in there, like you're gonna poke yourself, or you're gonna poke the top. Either one of those, bad outcome. Now you can see my brand new piece of elastic and it's holding tension on the little triangle flap. And I'm gonna reach in there with some scissors and cut off the excess. Uh, you might want to cut it before, and you might want to double over the elastic as well, but for now, we're just going to try it like this. There's the finished product. That's as good of a shot as I can get of it. There's some staples in there, and you can see the old one is all kind of rolled up behind it, the original elastic there, but that shouldn't go anywhere. Driver's side is completely done. I've got the Velcro slipped back over there and wrapped around. That takes a little bit of finesse as well. The loop side has to wrap all the way around this bar, and then the hook goes over that, so it will take you a second to get the Velcro back in there. Now, let's jump over to the passenger side and do it again. Another uh, cool thing about this repair is it should, I've heard, make the top easier to close. So I do have to take two hands to close this top. Uh, you run the power down and then there's a, it's like a handle right here. I have to grab that and kind of pull forward and then lock it in. And I've heard that once this repair is done, your top will just fall into place every time the way it should have from the factory. So I'm excited about that. Also, just to know, you're gonna need really good fabric shears to get this elastic. Uh, I tried my normal scissors and had no luck, but these are real fabric shears. I just bought them because they were sharp. They sure work. Here we go again. That one is just as floppy as the other one. Time to reinforce it. Staple in our new elastic and it should pull this top tight. Front side stapled on and we're headed to the, the rear, which is actually Pretty tricky to reach. You're gonna have to get both hands through this little bitty gap right there, but uh, you can get it stretched out and stapled in and you'll be good to go. Got the passenger side done. Now I just have to feed the Velcro back around and strap it all back together. Then it's time for us to test this thing and I sure hope it fixes the problem. I stretched these elastic bands, what I thought was quite a bit when I was putting them on, but honestly, I feel like they could take even more tension. Like, it holds it in, but I think it could take more tension. Let's find out if our tension's right or not. Some people say they double these up. It looks like it might've worked. Hey, look at that. That looks much nicer. Went right into its slot. And now let's come over here and hopefully another win. Look at that, yes. So it had actually stretched it out from how long this thing had been apart. But it looks like with a little bit of time in the sun, hopefully this shrinks back and everything's good to go. So that is it. 
Uh, honestly, like 50 cents uh, and some staples is what it costs to actually repair this issue. My next question, and I know everyone else's is, does it lock into place without me holding it? It does, look at that. So much better. I've also got to go get the Autel because after I unplugged the center console while we were doing the head unit, it set the airbag light. So uh, I got to clear that and we're done with the Porsche for the day and ready to head out on, I don't know, a 600 mile road trip. It's quite the trip, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, uh, hopefully the Porsche does what it's supposed to do. We'll all find out together if it survives the trip. The Porsche is ready to roll again. PAS is SRS if I remember right. So I don't see any issues there. None of this stuff matters. This is that SH switch in the door. No more SRS light on the gauges. It looks like we are home free. So there you go. That is how you fix your Porsche Boxster top for $3 or $2.17. And it's a effective fix. And I'm excited that the top is gonna sit exactly the way it's supposed to. So everybody that wants to buy this thing, there's your answer. Now you guys know what's up. It's been fixed and you can also keep fixing it. Uh, people have reported just fixing it over and over and over. Obviously it's cloth. Uh, you can just take a staple remover and pop out each leg, pull them out, and I'll even put this in the glove box. You can keep on adding extra elastic to it if you need to, or you can double it up, whatever you wanna do. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjargo.com for cool shirts, not like this, and please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and I will talk to you next time. All right, unplug the Autel. Got the updates done on the Autel. This thing should be road trip ready. Uh, 57 minutes to measure the oil, but it's it's topped off. It shows up every time I start the car now, and I love it. I am excited to go drive it. That's that's all I can say. It's a fun car. Gabe just came over to take a look around, and he drove this car, <laughs> and he had some thoughts. He told me that he thinks the Boxster is a horrible car, worst car he's ever driven, possibly. You know what? In 2004, it definitely would have been. <laughs> So here I am, years and years ago, you know, gonna get a new car. I'm stationed in Hawaii at the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, yeah, Porsche dealership, because it's cheaper in Hawaii to buy a high end car than it is to buy a Honda Civic. Because ah. they have like a $10,000 uh, oh. import fee and all this stuff. And, and so it's just cheaper to buy a nicer car. So go look at their uh, latest and greatest Porsche Boxster, and that car sucked. Just straight up terrible. Like I enjoyed my Honda Del Sol uh -huh. better than that. I also hated the old one. That's what everyone's opinions are based on. The generation right. before this car. And then, and, but people are real upset that I even said the old one is bad. It, no, it is. It's yeah. just a lousy yeah. car. Yeah. But this one, holy cow! Everyone's like they got it right. <laughs> they like figured out and like made it a sports car again. Mm -hmm. It it handles beautifully. People are gonna be mad, man. They say that this is the exact same car. Everyone in the comments were saying that. The old one is exactly the same as this one. And I, I also, I disagree. Yeah, this, this car is mucho improvo. Pretty good. It's, it's pretty awesome. Well, I was impressed. Yeah, and now it's got music. And I took it out, it was raining, and uh, traction control off. I still couldn't throw it. Huh. I mean, it was good. Wild. So. That's awesome. I know I've sent it through some of the corners around here. The ones that matter at incredibly high speeds, yeah. and I'm like, wow, it it's is stuck. planted. I love it. I was I was very impressed. I was expecting a, a redo of that that Boxster, and not this one. New. No. It's a good car.